Today we're going to make a sofa out of bamboo plywood. It's a really easy project and it only requires about four to five basic power tools. I'm using bamboo plywood because it looks really cool, but any three quarter inch thick plywood will work. I made some PDF plans for this project with all of the dimensions and I'll put a link to that in the description box below. I started with my rip cuts. To do this, I just clamped down a straight edge with a couple of 99 cent squeeze clamps and then use that as a guide for my circular saw. For the cross cuts, I just use a 12 inch speed square to guide the saw. The base of the sofa has three legs and I'm gonna glue two of the pieces of plywood together to make some one and a half inch thick slabs that will be nice and sturdy. The three legs will be connected by two stretchers. These are just two and a half inch wide strips of plywood glued together. I got a little aggressive with the glue and had some squeeze out, so I just used a chisel to scrape that right off. These stretchers only need to be seven feet and eight inches long, so I didn't have to line the ends up perfectly because I have this opportunity to trim them to length. Now that the length is set, I can draw in some notches and I'm gonna cut these with my jigsaw. These notches will match up with some notches that I'm going to cut in the legs and this will give me a nice stable base. I wanted the stretchers to be thin and I kept them to just two and a half inches wide. But keeping them thin required that I use three legs instead of just two. So this is sort of a trade off and you can adjust this design by making a thicker stretcher and using just two legs. This plywood is exactly three quarters of an inch thick. So that made it really easy to measure and mark and then cut out these notches. But if you're using a inferior grade plywood, make sure you double check the exact thickness. Sometimes three quarter inch furniture grade plywood isn't exactly three quarters of an inch. So just make sure to double check before you cut. I'm relying on measurements, but I also want to make sure that the pieces are the same. So I double check my measurements against the previous piece that I cut. Sometimes things get a little bit away from you and you aren't perfectly accurate. If that happens, just split the difference between your intended measurements and what you actually cut on the previous piece. The plywood came pretty smooth, but I did have to do quite a bit of sanding along the edges and the wood's quite hard. So on the edges, I started with 100 grit and then worked my way up to 220. And I also gave the side panels a once over with the 220 grit. Now I've learned over the years that it's really important to remove all the dust from wood before you apply a finish. I like to use these microfiber rags and really wipe them down, get all the dust off of them. And then I added a thick coat of Maker Brand Simple Finish. It's a plant-based oil finish that's fantastic for bringing the color out in the wood, or in this case, the bamboo. And it has just a little bit of wax in it, which offers a durable protective coating. After applying the first heavy coat, I let it sit for about 10 minutes and then used a clean rag to rub out the excess. The backrest is supported by some angled pieces. In the plans, you'll see the measurements, but don't worry, this is really easy to do. I just draw out the lines, draw a diagonal, and then just cut along that line with my circular saw. You can also use a jigsaw if you're a little bit more accurate with that. I didn't cut the pieces perfectly, but that's okay. I'll still have a chance to even them up during the sanding process. Plus, I'm going to trim the ends. These three angled back supports are also going to be two layers of plywood thick. So I just glued them up and clamped them with some more of the spring clamps. If you want to save some plywood, you could substitute 2x4s for these pieces. I made a base plate that was the same width as the bottom of these angled supports. And I want notches to lock in the supports. But instead of cutting them with a jigsaw, I just cut the pieces so that when I laminated the two layers together, the gaps are built right in. 
I sanded down the angle supports, and this took a little bit of time because I had to bring those imperfect angled edges nice and even. Once they were even, I just trimmed off the sharp tips, and now I had three angle supports that were all exactly the same length. These supports fit right into the notches that I made in the base plate. I just added in a little wood glue into those notches and then screwed in the angled supports. Now my fit was pretty tight, so I just used a clamp to really make sure I was pushing that support all the way down. In general, the bamboo plywood is really straight, far straighter than typical plywood, but the base plate was a little bit uneven when the glue was curing. So I just clamped a two by four to it to straighten it out before attaching the backrest. This sofa has built-in side tables, so I used the full eight foot length of the sheet of plywood to make the board that will go under the cushions. Now, I get a lot of people worried about their shins, so I just traced a radius around the corners, trimmed it with my jigsaw, and then sanded it all smooth. This will just soften up the edges a little bit. I applied some simple finish to the backrest. These days I tend to finish the pieces as I fabricate them. That comes in handy when you're working on big projects and you don't have enough floor space to lay everything out. I applied some glue in the notches that I cut into the legs and then put in the stretchers. I then used some long three inch finish screws to screw through the stretcher and into the legs. Now if you're worried about the wood splitting, I recommend pre-drilling some holes, but I lived dangerously and just went for it. If the stretchers were a little bit wider and you use something as precise as a CNC, I do think you could make this knockdown furniture with no glue and screws and just have everything slot together. But maybe we'll try that at a future date. I then added the big board that will support the cushion. I made sure to get it nice and centered over the base, and to make this a little bit easier, I clamped a spacer strip of plywood to the front. That way all me and Jesse had to do was just line up the ends. I designed it so that all three legs are underneath the cushions. This way I can screw just through this top piece of plywood and all those screws will be covered by the cushions themselves. You could make it a little bit stronger by screwing through the top piece of plywood and into the stretchers that stick out past the outer legs, but it's plenty strong as it is. I'm really digging this bamboo plywood. The edge grain is just so cool looking. It almost looks like a miniature butcher's block. And the simple finish really brings out this caramel color. Moving a sofa is never fun. So I thought I'd make it a little bit easier by making it quick and easy to remove the backrest. I got some quarter inch brass bolts. They didn't really need to be brass, but I thought it would look good with this wood, even though they're in the back and you won't really see them. And just drilled a couple of holes in between the angled supports. And boom, nice and secure and easy to remove. I've made a lot of DIY sofas over the year and I'll put links to those projects in the description below. But the feedback I got is that people are pretty comfortable with the woodworking part of things, but there's a lot of apprehension and concern about how to make cushions. So my buddy Mike from Modern Builds and I decided to make our own cushion company. And since we're not really good at naming things, we just called it the Simple Cushion Company. We decided to manufacture exactly what we were looking for and couldn't find. Simple modern cushions that will withstand the wear and tear of daily life at an affordable price. These vegan leather cushions in walnut are now for sale for just $250 for a complete set of sofa cushions. Seriously, do some comparison shopping. This is a really good deal. Actually, you know what? Take a lot of time. Look all around the internet and let me know if you find a better deal. We also offer them in authentic cowhide leather, but due to the fact that a whole animal had to be created to make them, that's more expensive. And I actually prefer the matte look of the vegan leather over the more glossy finish on the cowhide. In addition to the slim leather modern cushions, we're also offering a thicker version where a combined set of four is just a little bit longer. It's really nice if you wanna lie across them. And we're offering them in a fabric finish. Now, I know you'll probably have a lot of questions, but just click on the link in the description below to go to the website and you'll find all the information there. Now, we're not gonna order a ton of these. We have a pretty limited supply. It's our first time testing out this product and we're, frankly, we're not entirely sure what the response will be. 
we felt that there was a need for this, but ultimately it'll be up to the consumer to decide. Now, if you don't want to buy cushions and you want to do it the old fashioned way and make it yourself, I do have some videos that I'll show you how to make your own cushion. So just look for the playlist in the description box below. If you want to learn more about the bamboo plywood, I'm working on another video for this modular uh, entertainment center that's behind me. And that's where I'll go into a little more depth about working with bamboo, where I source it, and some of the other characteristics that I've discovered along the way of working with it. Oh, and one more thing before you go. We have a new Instagram channel. I'll put a link to that in the description along with our TikTok. I know, kind of old for TikTok, but what can you do? You gotta stay up with the times. We also rebranded our second channel from Home and Modern 2 and now just called it Trickle Up Design. And we'll be using that channel to show more behind the scenes about how I draw, how I use different software, and just to talk about design and where I get my inspiration. So subscribe to this channel, subscribe to that channel, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye everybody.